Hello, hello. My name is Kim Addis. I'm the president and founder of Frame of Mind Coaching, and you have just joined the Frame of Mind Coaching podcast, where we invite leaders from all over the world to come onto the podcast and get coached live and in person. Today, my guest is Joel Cleland. Did I say that right? Correct. Cleland. And he is the CEO of a company called Centric. Welcome, Joel. I'm so happy to have you here today. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What is Centric? Give us a little bit of uh, information. Thank you, Kim. I'm from Southern California and Centric is a dual token cryptocurrency company. And so basically we're in the evolving blockchain fintech cryptocurrency space. And we have two tokens in one company. And our vision is to solve volatility in the cryptocurrency space so that there's more use and adoption globally for cryptocurrency. And I got into the space originally as an investor and I knew the former CEO of Centric and got a chance to meet the team over a period of time. And then they asked me if I'd be interested in coming aboard and steering the ship. So okay. that's what I did. So how long have you been with Centric? I started with Centric as CEO in March. So oh, wow. just, okay. yeah, just a few months. Okay. New to the game. New to the game. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how's it going so far? It's going great. It's going okay. wonderfully. I have uh, a new COO that we brought on in April and he's amazing. Tommy. Uh, really, I'm sorry? Tommy. Tommy. Yes. Very good. Yes. You've been digging up on me. Or I did my homework. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, Tommy's great. He, he has a background in the space and he's a, he's a driver. He's an operator. So it's great because uh, I don't need to be concerned about uh, him taking care of things. He's doing a great job. We have, a, we have a, an evolving team and our team is absolutely amazing. We're a global team. So we're not just U.S., although Tommy and I are U.S. Okay. And we're just, we're looking to plant our flag and make our, make our name for, for Centric. So your background was not in cryptocurrency at all? No, just as an investor, I was an enthusiast. I, I thought it was interesting and anything in the money space has always fascinated me. I came from okay. more of a traditional background in insurance and traditional planning. Okay. So when this opportunity came, came, came available to me. I, of course, wanted to take advantage of it for a variety of reasons, but mostly because I was a pre-existing investor and I wanted to make sure that the, that the project was moving in the right direction. And I already knew the people involved, so I knew I was joining a good team. So you had full buy-in. Correct. Okay, good. So what is your greatest challenge? What do you want to talk about today? Well, when we first talked, I, I said I wanted to talk about anxiety related to content and confidence, which we can talk about. I know that would okay. be fun. Yeah, but <laughs> I'd also like to talk about, we can talk about both. I'd like to talk about executive etiquette and okay. core values because um, I have some very strong core values in, in a few conversations I've had in in the last couple of months with a few members of our team and people outside the team, I've started to understand that it's not just about what I want and what I believe, but it's also about the care of my team and okay, so, being thought so let's, about let's, others. And my let's team. dig into that for a minute. Sure. What do you mean by executive etiquette? And what do you mean by it's not only about what I want, it's about caring for my team? So right. Kind of like, I'm going to, I'm going to, can I share two things. things with you that yes, come to mind? Please, please. I need, I need a little more detail on Some this. context. Okay. So I've started really dissecting words and phrases and word choice. And so it's like, okay, I can, I can give this, deliver the same message and have this, my intentions be the same and be pure and choose different words. So word choice, I think is, is one. And then another would be, I, I'm very active on social media and it's like, okay, this tweet, not that tweet or no tweet. <laughs> so, so kind of understanding kind of that balance that it's like as CEO of a company, I'm out there. I'm not just Joel, the investor. I'm not just Joel. 
uh, some member of the team. Um, as as CEO, I'm an evangelist. I'm a spokesman for the team. Yeah. And and just kind of being cognizant of that, I guess, Absolutely. and and being aware of it because it's not something I always kind of got hung up on. That oh well, my words, you know, they'll be taken by some people one way and others other ways, and and I can't really. I, I'm not responsible for how people take my words, but I can be thoughtful about it, I guess. So are you saying that words are important to you and you want them to be just as important to the people on your team who are representing you and the brand and who are on social media and tweeting and messaging out there on your behalf? Is that what you're saying? Partially. I, I would say that, that the message is the most important. And the yeah. words I choose are secondary. And where, yeah. whereas I wouldn't get hung up before on words, now I'm more thoughtful about the words. So where's the challenge? Is it that you are concerned about your words or are you concerned about the words that your team is putting out there? What's the challenge? Right. Well, I'm not concerned about my team because we, okay. we've, got a, we've got a great messaging in-house. I, I'm okay. talking more specifically about when I'm out there publicly. Yeah. Like this, this interview is going to get out there at some point. <laughs> so yeah. the words I use here will be public at some point. That's kind of what I'm, I'm getting at where I, I'm very clear on our message, global yeah. adoption, solving volatility, yeah. getting business integration, payment systems, those types of things. But just when I'm kind of shooting from the hip that I'm using, using words that are appropriate, I guess, not that I would be inappropriate. But it, I, I guess it's a, it's a tough game. It's a tough game, the game of conversation. Because it's like, okay, this is the message I'm trying to get across. This is what I want people to understand. This is the takeaway. These are the feelings <laughs> that I want them to okay. feel. So, you know so, what I mean? Yeah. So I want you to like pay attention to this conversation because I think this is very, very interesting. What you're bringing to the table is interesting from a conversation standpoint. And so... Okay, let me kind of step back. Why do I have a podcast? I have a podcast to introduce people to frame of mind coaching, to give people value, to get to meet people like you. I'm being transparent, right? Why does anybody have a podcast? They have a podcast to spread their message, correct? But when I get onto the podcast, I don't start by spreading my message. Right. I don't start by talking. I mean, I do, but not, right? I'm not talking about myself or anything like that. Where does my conversation begin? I start with being interested, being curious, asking you the questions. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So my conversation doesn't begin with my message. My conversation begins with learning about you, right? about where you're coming from, about what your challenges are, about what you know, what we, how you see the world, um, what you're experiencing, et cetera. My conversation doesn't begin with me. It begins with you. And I think that very often people are misunderstanding how conversation needs to go and how messaging needs to go. Very often they think messaging is what do I need to say? How do I say it? How do I get the words across that I want people to know and understand? And what I would suggest is flip it around. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you when I, you know, and for those of you who don't know, before I get onto a podcast with someone like Joel and I have never met before, but he filled out a little bit of a form to say, here's the challenge I want to talk about. And we, he wrote the word cryptocurrency. I'm like, oh no, I don't know anything about cryptocurrency. How am I even going to have this conversation? I don't even know what a token is. Never mind, Right. But does that make me feel uncomfortable about getting to know you? Absolutely not. I'm excited to get to know you. I'm excited to learn something new. And I'm excited to learn something new from a layman's perspective, where I represent all the other people in the world who know nothing about cryptocurrency, except that it's probably something I should know about, right? And so my messaging has nothing to do with what I want to say. My messaging has everything to do with what I want to learn, mm. right? So it's a flip on the conversation. And so for me, when I think about being in your shoes, I think about what is it, not that I want to say, but what is it that I want to learn about what people already know and don't know about cryptocurrency? And how can I, um, now where the messaging comes into play, how can I talk in a way where they understand what I'm saying? That makes sense. Right? How, can I, how can I relate? How can I connect? As opposed to worrying about what I need to say, the question is, how do I really connect? 
Does that make any sense? That resonates. Yes. So I keep referring back to what I call the five coaching steps, but really they're five communication steps. They're, they're the steps that we use in my business kind of day in and day out to really talk to people and understand who they are, where they're coming from, what's going on for them, and then helping them move to the next place, which is exactly what you're doing. Understanding who they are, where they're coming from, what they're challenged with, and helping them go to the next place with respect to cryptocurrency. Right? And so Correct. how do I do that? I use the five coaching steps. And I will very quickly share with them with you if that would help help you. Does that make sense for you right now? Yes. Okay. So the first thing I do when I come into a conversation is like, I came in going, you know, I'm a little <laughs> worried, right? I'm a little worried. And what I had to do is like erase that. I had to remove any pre preconceived notions I had about you. And I, and when you came on, I'm like, wow, you're a lot younger than I expected, but I had to remove that. Right. I had to like get rid of that so that I could be totally present and here and excited about the conversation we're about to have. So I have to remove all my preconceived notions. I've got to assume positive intent and I've got to come in with a huge amount of curiosity. And that's exactly what I did. The second thing I want to do is I want to get your story. Who are you? Where are you coming from? What's going on? What are you about? What are you challenged with? The third thing I want to do is I want to dig a little further. So when you said, hey, you know, I want to talk about like the words I use, I'm like, what are you talking about exactly? Tell me more. Give me more concept, uh, context. I want to go deeper. I want to understand exactly what you're challenged with. So here we are, right? And now what I'm trying to do is trying to uh, get to a place where I was encapsulating. So I'm like, is this really your issue? And you're like, no, that's not really my issue. This is my issue, right? Did you see all the steps in the process? And what we're really doing is connecting. We're just, I'm just trying to understand you. And as I'm trying to understand you, I'm now at the point of understanding and understanding what's getting in your way and what's getting in your way. Now is the coaching component is, is, is it this Joel? Is it the fact that you think you need to speak perfectly and you need to be that orator and you need to like stand on the stage and, you know, have all the words perfectly coming out of your mouth. Is that the thing? I don't think so. Cause I know perfect isn't, isn't possible. We just strive for, for perfection, but. Right. So what's the thing you're after? The connection piece. That's yeah. what, that's, that's that you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah. And so I can fumble up my words on a podcast. I can call your name wrong, right? <laughs> like I can do all that, but I'm really after the connection. And really the way that I connect is by truly trying to understand you. And only then, only when I've reached that place, can I possibly create space for me to share any message. Does that make sense? It does. So from a strategic standpoint, we spend a lot of time thinking about what we want to say as opposed to thinking about what do we want to learn? What are the questions I need to ask to really understand where this person's coming from and their, where their starting place is? I would encourage you to create your communication strategy around learning where people are at and offering a small component of messaging because that upfront work creates the relationship and creates the openness to hearing what it is that you have to say. That makes sense. Is this what you expected from our conversation? I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Now you want to go back to discussing um, anxiety because we still have a few minutes. Sure. sure. Tell me about the anxiety you're talking about. Well, you said that cryptocurrency is a space that is still new to you and new to, it's new to a lot of people. And there's, there's always something new to learn. And one thing that my company, we started doing is we started doing weekly webinars for people new to, not necessarily new to crypto, but new to centric. And so every single Wednesday we have an educational webinar. It's live. Right. 
Yeah. And it gives people an opportunity to ask questions. And I, I, I think what you touched on was learning about what's important to people, I think is really significant. Because one of the things we're trying to solve in the space, I mean, we're trying to solve volatility, but crypto in the space is trying to help the unbanked world come into the 21st century with money knowledge and the ability to access money and resources. And there's a lot of breakthroughs there, but it's, it's a process and it's going to take some time. I, I think at the end of the day, if, if we know what people want and what they need, because everybody needs resources, no matter who they are, no matter what level they're at. And seeing how we can serve them, I think is, is key. So are you saying that, again, let me just try to figure this out. You go onto a webinar and in your mind before this conversation, your job was to sound like the expert and you being fairly new to crypto, fairly, not new, but fairly, you're like, well, I don't have all the answers. <clears throat> that makes me a little uncomfortable. There you go. And this conversation, I'm suggesting you don't need to have the answers. You need to have the questions. Right? Right. And you can bring people on your team who will maybe answer the questions. Right? Or who will. Yeah, if, if, I the can't, if I can't. Exactly. <laughs> But, right. but your, your job is not so much to be the expert. Your job is to facilitate conversation. And your job is to extract from people what it is that they're concerned about, what it is that they want to know, what it is that they're curious about, what it is that will help them increase their comfort and confidence in this area that is also maybe a little foreign to them. I agree. I, I yeah. know that to be true to Kim, because I've had those experiences already. Right, right. Where I, or I feel like I'm bringing people together, starting the conversation, but I'm almost taking a step back. Yeah, exactly. It's actually very, I don't want to say the word invigorating because that seems kind of big, <laughs> but it, it is invigorating. It feels What's good. It feels good. Yeah. Feels good when, when I can kind of help broker, broker relationships and conversation. I guess. Right. So I want to kind of just step back and kind of take a little bit of a bigger view of this. The word anxiety is interesting because when we're anxious or uncomfortable about something or worried about something, it's typically because we have a set of beliefs about how we should show up, what we should mm. know, um, how equipped we should be. And the word should is the critical term here. And we have these beliefs around ourselves and how we equipped we are right? And that should word creates the anxiety. When you look back and you say, well, I'm not as equipped, I'm not as knowledgeable, I'm not as much of an expert as I should be. And what, what I have discovered is whenever we have that, I, and I apologize, but we use a term in at Frame of Mind Coaching, when we have all those shoulds, they're typically bullshit, right? <laughs> they're typically... True. They're typically inventions that we put upon ourselves that create that anxiety. And, and if I were to play it out a little bit further, you have an idea or a picture in your mind that says, if someone asks me a question and I don't know the answer, that means I'm not smart enough, I'm not prepared enough, I'm not equipped enough, and I can't have that, right? And so what we want to do when people do feel anxious or worried or uncomfortable is explore the beliefs that's causing that discomfort and really go down the path of, so let's play it out. What is the worst possible scenario that could possibly happen? Failure. That's it. It's not death. <laughs> well, it's not death, Probably. but is it actually, is it actually <laughs> failure? Uh, maybe failure in the moment. But and then that's so okay. That's okay. Right. So what I like to do with people is actually have them write out what absolute failure in that moment looks like, write out the worst case scenario. And people say, how is that useful? I say, because after, no, after that, I'm going to ask you to write out recovery from that failure in the out in that moment. Think it through, think through a disastrous conversation and then think through recovery. What do you do after that? 
Do you reach out to the person and say, Hey, I got the information you wanted. Do you reach out to the person and say, Hey, thank you so much for asking me that question. You just inspired me to go learn the answer. What do you do? What does recovery look like? Right. Once you have failure and recovery kind of down. Now we push those aside and we create a document that says, here's what it looks like when we're knocking it out of the park. Here's what ideal looks like. Here's what winning looks like. And let's focus on that. And here's the thing. What do absolutely extraordinary people do? It's not that they never look at failure or never consider failure. They do. They consider failure and recovery. Mm -hmm. They say, I can handle that. Now let me focus on success. I love it. Yeah. So that's the recommendation for you to kind of deal with all of it. Number one is look at what does it truly mean to be the messenger? Is it the person who needs to do all the talking or does it, is it the person who needs to do all the learning? Mm. Right? So that's thing number one. And then the second piece in terms of dealing with nervousness or anxiety is play it out. So it fails, <laughs> imagine recovery and now focus on your success. Yeah. I can do that. Amazing. It's got me I, where I am. <laughs> I'm sure. I, 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 I know that you've had quite an interesting past in lots of different industries. Um, and I have no doubt that you're going to be extremely successful here too. I agree. Thank you so much for sharing your challenge with us today. I think it's a challenge that is common. A lot of people who are in new industries and doing new things definitely experience a little discomfort, a little anxiety, and they worry about how they show up and how they sound and what they say. Um, So thank you for sharing that with us. I hope that you took something of value from this conversation. Definitely. If for those of you who are listening, if there's a challenge that you want to share with us, please reach out. I'd love to have you on the podcast. My email address is kim at frameofmindcoaching.com. And if there is a challenge that you have that you want to discuss, but maybe not so much on a podcast, please reach out to me as well. My email address is kim at frameofmindcoaching.com. And if you're listening to the podcast, please like, please share, please review, do all the things you do on a podcast. And thank you for tuning in. We will see you next time. Have a great day. 